So the first thing is the general expression. <laughs> the general equation. Okay, the general equation in grade 11 is f of x equal to a times b to the power of x plus p plus q. Okay, that's the general equation. Last year, the P was not there because there was no horizontal shift of the graph of any exponential function. Okay, so this P wasn't there last year. That P represents horizontal shift. Okay, that P represents horizontal shift. Right, so I'm going to talk about... Uh, Okay, the property is more detailed, but the first thing is you need to know that the general equation is that. Then we are going to start with the property. Okay, so that's your general equation. Forget about the one that you were doing last year in grade in grade ten. This is your general equation in grade eleven and next year as well. Right. So let's start with the orientation. Right. The orientation. How? The graph will look like. Now there are two constants that determine the orientation of the graph. The first one is the value of a and the second one is the value of b. Okay? The value of q is just the value of y along the horizontal asymptote. An exponential function has got one asymptote which is horizontal. Okay? And the value of q is the value of, of, of y along the horizontal uh, asymptote. Now, it's very important for you to know that the base b can never be 0. It can never be 0. It can never be 1. Okay? It can be a fraction between 0 and 1, or it can be any number greater than 1. So there are two cases. Right? Then, with the value of a, it can be positive or negative. Okay? So, when A is positive and B is greater than 1, the exponential function will be an increasing function. So, it will look like this. Okay? It will be an increasing function. And the asymptote will be below the graph. So, when you sketch the, the, the curve, it will be above the asymptote. That is only true when the value of A is positive, the value of B is greater than 1. Okay? Then, when the value of A is positive, but the value of, uh, of B is between 0 and 1, which means it will be a fraction, like a half, a third, a quarter, and so on, then we get what is called a decrease in function. At the same time, the graph or the curve will be drawn above the asymptote. So, just to summarize for you here, you need to know that the value of A and the value of B the relationship. The two, okay, are the ones that will make the graph be an increasing function or a decreasing function. Okay? Then, when A is negative, okay, you get what's called a decreasing function. Okay? You get a decreasing function. When B is positive, it will be a decrease in function, but the asymptote will be above the curve. Right? Then, when A is negative, but B is, is a fraction between 0 and 1, you will again get a decrease in function with an asymptote which is above the curve. Okay? So you have to know this. It will help you, if you are sketching, to help you to have an idea of how the graph is going to look like. Okay? Right. Can I move on? So this is the orientation. Okay, it is determined by the value of A and the value of B. Right. Then the shape. Of course, orientation and shape they are correlated or they are related. So the effect of the value of A. Now, as the value of A increases, you will find that 
the uh, the graph okay, is stretched away from the asymptote. Okay, when the value of a increases, then you find that the, the, the graph is stretched away from the asymptote. So it will look like this. But generally, we won't test you on uh, the detailed effect of a. Okay, you will never get a question on that. Okay, a does not cause any of the graph to, to shift at all. It just tells you the relation between the graph itself and the asymptote. Okay, the shift is not affected by the value of a. It's just, it's more like it's a straight factor. Do you see the difference? Yeah. The stiffness changes when the value of a increases. It's more like they're saying, that if you look at the distance, say from here to there, for the same value of x, if you were to compare them, you'll find that the, the distance between the asymptote as x increases, and the distance between a specific point on the on the graph and the asymptote, they are not going to be the same. They will increase with the value of a increases. So basically, the Yeah, it's more like it's a. Okay. Can I say a, 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 in context, take the picture if you want. But but, but the, this is the detail. The details with regard to the effect of a are not that. Important. What's important is the orientation. Yeah. This is very important. Right? Then we have got the effect of B. Now, B, okay, just to make it easier for you, the value of B is just a value which also tells you how the orientation of the graph is going to be. So the greater the value of B, the flatter the graph starts. And the steeper it ends. Okay, so it becomes it, uh, a little bit flatter and it becomes very steep, right? But that is if the value of b is greater than one. If it's between zero and one, the closer the value of b gets to zero, the, the steeper the graph starts and the flatter it ends. Okay, now the reverse of the data gets more upright. Right? So we we want to ask you about this part. Okay, the effect, the detailed effect of B. Okay, that's not for your curriculum to know the details. Right? Know the fact that B can never be zero, B can never be one. B and A have a relationship. And that relationship helps you to determine the orientation of the graph. Right? Then the asymptote. Now this is very important now. It has got one asymptote. And that asymptote is got an equation, which is y equals to q. The exponential function has one asymptote, which is y equal to q. It's not like the hyperbola, which has got two asymptotes. This one, it has got one asymptote. The okay. two, it has got one asymptote, right? Only has one asymptote and the equation is y equal to q. The determination of the asymptote is very, very easy. So given the equation, identify your value of q and write your equation is y equal to q. So at that step point, we did that last year. So the way you were doing it last year, when it comes to the horizontal asymptote, it hasn't changed. The grade 10 and 11, the equation of an asymptote of an exponential function remains the same. When the axis of, of symmetry it has no axis of symmetry like the hyperbola. There, there are no axis of symmetry. Okay? There are no axis of symmetry. Now, then the domain and the range. Okay, let's start with the domain. Now, the domain is always x is an element of real numbers. Okay? So what, what this means is we are starting from minus infinity up to positive infinity. That's what it means. So when you're asked to write down the domain of an exponential function, you don't have to stress yourself. You just write x is an element of real numbers. And then you are done. Or you can write using inequality signs. You want to use the brackets. 
then it will be x, it will be x, then element, you put the minus infinity and your positive infinity inside the circular brackets. Okay. Are you following that? Huh? All right. Then the range now is slightly different. For the range, you have to include the value at the asymptote. Okay? For the range, you have to include the value at the horizontal asymptote. That is the value of Q. So your range now it depends. If A is positive, then it will be an increasing function. Therefore, your Q value will be the minimum. Okay? In that case, when you write your range, the Y is greater than Q. Okay, remember, we don't include the value of Y along the horizontal asymptote. We have to exclude it when you're writing the range. So the range will be Y is greater than Q, right? So when I use brackets, then Y is an element. You put your Q first as your minimum and your positive infinity as your maximum. And then you have to use circular brackets. I don't like this notation. I prefer this one. That's what I prefer. Okay, because with this notation, you make a mistake of putting a square bracket, your answer becomes incorrect. Okay, even if you identify the minimum value correctly, the moment you put a square bracket, the answer becomes incorrect. Right? Then when A is negative, you always get what's called a decreasing function. In that case, the asymptote will be above the curve. Therefore, Q becomes the maximum value. So your answer will be, for the rate, Y is less than Q. It can also be written using circular brackets as that. Which means your minimum will be negative infinity, your maximum will be positive uh, Q. Alright? So always when you're writing the range, the, the range of an exponential function, the Q value is excluded. You don't include it as part of the range. Okay. Right. So let's move on to sketching. The exponential function is probably, okay, in terms of what you need to know about it, it's not much, but I found that it's a little bit of a problem if you could uh, remember. I don't know why, but yeah. that's how it is. Okay, so let, let's sketch now. Sketching. Exponential graph. Sketching exponential graph. Right. I'll start with f of x in part 2. Well, allow me to just start with the grade 10 function first. So we can have, say, 2 to the power of x plus 1. Okay, this is grade 10. So if I want to sketch this, first thing, I need to know the x-intercept. Okay? Now, as you can see, the value of a is a 1, it's positive. The value of b, it's a 2. Okay? p is 0, which means there is no horizontal shift. q is equal to 1. Since the value of a from the general equation is positive, and the value of b is greater than 1, it's going to be an increase in function. The asymptote is going to be below the curve. Okay? So let's find x intercept. You get this when f of x or y is zero. Okay? So f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x plus y. Okay? Then 
where there is f of x, we put 0, we have 2 to the power of x plus 1. Then we take the, the positive 1 to the left, we get 2 to the power of x. Okay? Now, is it possible to convert minus 1 to a base of 2? No. no. What this means is x is undefined. There is no x intercept. Okay? This is a sign that there is no x intercept. Right? Then the y intercept, you get the y intercept when x is 0. So this will be f of x equal to 2 to the power of x plus y. Where there is x, you put 0 there. And that will give you 1 plus 1, and then you get a 2. Okay, so the y intercept is going to be a 2. Okay, the y intercept is going to be a 2. Yeah? So, when you apply the x intercept, the part that says negative 1 equals 2 to the power of x. After this, can you show us an example where you have to find the x? Okay, you can only the okay. x intercept can only exist if you are able to convert whatever number is on the left to the same base as that. Yeah, but don't worry, I'll show you. Let's say you change that one. Okay, like for example, if if if, if, if we had a minus a, a, a minus one there, then we are going to end up getting. We're going to end up getting 1 equal to 2 to the power of x. Then we can convert the 1 to 2 to the power of 0. So x is going to be 0. If, the, if this was a minus, it means that the asymptote is below the x axis. Okay? But here, it's a positive 1, means the asymptote is above the x axis. Therefore, the graph does not have an x intercept. Don't worry, I'll give you a question where you will get an x value of an x in the set. Okay, but you have to know both cases. Okay? So this is what we have. Then, the equation of the asymptote now. Equation of the asymptote. That equation is going to be y equal to positive y, which is this. Okay? So I go y equal to positive y. Right? Now I can sketch. Allow me to sketch now. Allow me to sketch, right? We have got a y intercept, which is a 2. So if I put 1 here, and then 2 there, maybe I can put minus 1 here, minus 2, minus 3. There is no x intercept left. Okay? So my key point is the horizontal asymptote that's there which is y equal to y, then I also have a y intercept there. So when I sketch it, I sketch it as an increasing function to look like this. Okay? That's how it's going to look like. Okay, so this will be f of x equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. This is a grade 10 exponential graph. Okay? It's a grade 10 exponential graph. You don't really need a table to draw an exponential function. Okay? The domain is going to be x is an element of real numbers. Okay? And I told you why. We are starting from 
negative infinity here, we have negative infinity there, R2, positive infinity. Yes? So, when you find your asymptote for a potential complicate, and you use the same, uh, the same things as before, for that asymptote, and you can use that single value to the value of the I told you here already. Yes. That the equation of the of an asymptote for an exponent of an is always y equal to g. Always. There is no there is no vertical asymptote. It only has a horizontal asymptote. Okay? If only one function has got two asymptotes, that's a type of one. Okay. The hyperbola has got two asymptotes, but the exponential function has got one asymptote. Okay? What you were taught last year with regard to the exponential function hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is that in grade 11 we can shift it horizontally. That's all. But the equation of the asymptote that you were taught last year was this. Why not Q? It won't, it won't change. Okay. Yeah, let me do a, another example. With, uh, okay. I've given the, the domain, the, the range. Okay. Range. In this case here, I can write the Y is greater than Y. That's my range. So this is the range. Okay, so y can never be 1, or y can never be less than 1. If you write like this, y is greater than 1, that's it. You don't have to write anything else. Okay? You follow? So let's do a more complicated example. It is a grade level one, okay? Where we are going to shift to the graph, okay? So, second example, you have f of x equal to, let's say two, the power of three, x plus one, okay? Like what value can I put in here? Uh, my t. Because I need to put a value which will make it easier for us to calculate the uh, x in the Okay, so I'm just figuring out what it is. Okay, maybe I'll change two. Hey, listen, you are in a lesson. You are in a lesson. Right, so let's start by finding the x intercept. You have to substitute f of x by y equal to 0. Okay? Now, this is a great term function. Okay? So, so when I get on here, I have to put 0 on the left, and I'll get 2 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 minus 2. Okay? Right. The objective is to determine the x-intercept. So I'll take the negative 2 to the left, I'll get 2 equal to 2 times 3 to the power of x plus 1. Now, with the exponential function, you have to know how to solve exponential equations. So the backbone of understanding the exponential function is exponential equations, what you did in term one. Right? And you divide both sides by two here. You get one to the power of two, three to the power of x plus one. Okay? Now, the good thing is we can convert the one to a base of what? Three. 
So this will be 3 to the power of 0 equal to 3 to the power of x plus 1. So if you simplify that, you end up getting 0 equal to x plus 1, which means x could have been negative 1. So the x intercept is going to be negative 1. So the curve will pass through where x is negative 1. Okay? Now, I also want you to give you further information based on what I said earlier. The value of, of a is positive, therefore we are going to have an increasing function. The value of b is greater than 1. So since the value of a is positive, the value of b is greater than 1, when, we, when I sketch the graph, it's going to be an increasing function, the asymptote is going to be below the curve. Okay? So these two values are the ones that will help me to know whether the asymptote is going to be above the curve or going to be below the curve. Also, whether the, the, the function, when I draw it, to go up like this or it will go up like that. Is determined by the value of a and the value of b. Alright, x intercept. Right, let's find the x intercept. Now, the x intercept, so that the, the y intercept value, the y intercept, we substitute x equal to 0. Okay, you have to substitute x equal to 0. So our equation is f of x equal to 2 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 minus 2. Okay? If I want to find the y-intercept, it means I have to put x equal to 0, so it will be f0 is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 0 plus 1 minus 2. And that will give me 2 times 3 to the power of 1 minus 2. And you get 6. Okay? Don't get confused. It's 2 times 3 to the power of 1. That's a 6. Minus 2 you get a 4. So the y-intercept is going to be a 4. Are you following? Then, equation of asymptote. Equation of asymptote. Please, the asymptote is a straight line. And it is not an equation. So in this case, it's determined by this value here. So that would be y equal to negative 2. You can write that even if your eyes are closed. And then if you ask me, can you write the equation of the asset of the value of eyes are closed like this? Write the y equal to negative 2. All right. Are you following? Huh? So, after you've seen the equation of the exponential function, if I ask you to write the equation of that exponential function, you can close your eyes and write it down. Because you don't need any any skill in terms of calculation. There's no calculation involved. You just see it from the equation that, okay, the value of Q is in the negative two. Right? If you can understand that now, all oh, this year, next year, it will come back again. The same piece. All right. So now let's sketch. So let's move on to the next page. Now, the next page, we're going to sketch function. So I've got my y equal to 4, my x is equal to what? At, at the intercept. x is negative 1. So let me, and my asymptote is going to be below the x-axis. So let me draw like that. So if I calibrate this as saying, a positive one and your two then negative three and then negative one negative two negative three and one 
two, three, two, four, and then maybe five. Something to pressure. Maybe I need to drop my hand. Okay, let's see what happens. So a Y intercept, it's, it's a fork. X intercept is negative one. So here we have an X intercept, then we have the Y intercept. The horizontal asymptote is a negative two. Okay. So when I draw it. So it will look like this. Okay? So that's my function. Why? For that I'll say f of x. F of x because it's the same thing. But just that if, if it's given in function notation, also write it in function notation. Plus you must get this function notation because that's the most common notation which is used. In great value, in great function, in great function. When you write the final values, it's generally functionless notation. Next year you are going to do a topic called calculus, which uses a lot of function notation. So if you get used to it, you have no issues. If you see f of x, you know that it's a y. Okay? Are you following? You see that I'm not struggling to sketch and I don't need a table. Right? So, let's write the domain. Right? Now, the domain doesn't change. The domain doesn't change. It's x, the element of the ones. No stress. Hmm. So if I ask you to write the domain of any, any exponential function, you can write it whilst your eyes are closed. If I come to your home and ask you whilst you're fast asleep and wake me up, what's the domain of any, any exponential function? You can tell me. Yeah. All right. Can you inform me, please, sir? Okay. The range. Now, the range. Okay, the domain is y. It's greater than negative 2. Okay? Again, you don't have to stress. Because you can see that the curve is above the asymptote. Therefore, the values of y must be greater than 2. Sorry, they must be greater than minus 2. Okay? Right? Like so. Is there anybody who has got any question? Okay, if you don't have any question, then uh, I'll give you a one class exercise. Go ahead.